Hello, dear friends. Here we are, 21 days to spiritual awakening. Today's day 14th, chapter 13th of the book. I'm back. In Portuguese, the original title is Voltei by Brother Jacob. And here we have ourselves at Cardiac Radio with you sharing this unprecedented news. It is unprecedented. You know why? Well, Vanessa, but Andre Luiz talked about it. But other non-spiritist um, books talk about it. But you know the uniqueness of this book? We have a spiritist writing the book. A spiritist. Andre Luiz he was not an incarnated spiritist who came back to tell us. Brother Jacob is actually the spiritist who was highly committed with spiritism and was allowed to come back to tell us about the beyond. His, his way of seeing life is different. His way of picking up the nuances of the spiritual realm is from the perspective of somebody who is not new to the reality of the spiritual realm. It's from the point of view of somebody who studied it, who practiced spiritism, and now has different ways of understanding what even his practice and the study could not have given him. And out of the mercy of God and the mercy of His loving heart, we were given in 1948, when this book was published, the opportunity of knowing a little more that can probably save us a lot of headaches. What do you think? Does it make you feel better? Does it make you feel more secure? What do you feel when you realize that there are people who are caring for you, who are making effort and sacrifices to come back from their better spheres to tell us, Spiritists, do not forget, it's not enough to know the scripture. We cannot forget to feel them. Quoting, and it's like paraphrasing from Jesus in his dialogue with Nicodemus, our brother Jacob comes back reminding us, especially in the chapter today, it's not enough to know. We need to feel it. Right? To help us feel it, we have Carol Correa. Yuki. Hi, guys. I should be here. Kisses from our heart to your heart. Yes, and she comes with the book. Feels <laughs> <laughs> a trust. Hooray! Hopefully, you will trust the words and the truths that will illuminate your mind, your heart, and your soul. Hopefully, you will make the choice to nourish your soul and nourish many beautiful lives in Africa by supporting the fraternity without borders. Your love goes beyond any border. And here's how you can practice sending it out miles and miles away, supporting our universal family. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. And it's a, it's a joy because it's teamwork effort. We know we don't work alone. No. But you know, in spiritism, there is no hierarchy. There is order, but no hierarchy. There is a hierarchy, hierarchy on our um, moral, the moral hierarchy. It's that what we call moral aristocracy, but there is no imposition at all. So, if you have a good idea, bring it forth. You don't need to ask the Pope, okay? And in Spiritism, we don't have Pope. 
we don't have bishops. We don't have priests. We only have friends. And there's nothing better than the title of friendship, my friends. As Jesus said, I am giving you the greatest title of all, friends, he said to the disciples. And this is where we stand to one another as friends, equally able, equally invited, equally given the offer and the resources to help. So if you're here with us and you're feeling the call to do more, to partake in efforts of the greater good and bringing forth ideas that are only passing by in your head. And I say only in your head because each of us has a unique role, but we're team working. Contact us, contact your friends that are locally to you and put your ideas to work because you are co-creator. You are meant to seek the good by molding the good with all the resources you have at hand. And Fraternity Without Borders is one venue. We can always participate, plus the inner work, plus the spiritual food. As Mentor Joseph said yesterday to all of us, clear cut, if you want to help the world today, the best ways to spiritually educate yourself and refine your studies on mediumship and participate in spiritist centers in the spiritist practice and go through the courses and the practice gradually so you can become part of seriously committed mediumistic groups in this world that will be the helping hands of the good spirits in the most important task, which is the task of mental renewal. Emmanuel in the book and the Candario de Luz, talking about the Spiritist Temple, he says the Spiritist Temple is a temple of mental renewal. And when you join forces with a team, you are promoting mental renewal. Mental renewal is about mental health, mental health, is spiritual health and spiritual health equals to immortal health. So our milestone to be achieved, immortal health, which is true harmony, true synchronicity with God, true and deep beauty. Ready? Yes. So here we have our beautiful community that makes our hearts speed up in a different way, right? Leia Severo, ah Leia, thank you, thank you for being with us, thank you, and for helping, and for leading the way to new frontiers at Kardec Radio as well. Andrea Torres. Adorable mind as well. You know, each one of us, if I tell, we're not going to be able to say the study. But <laughs> well, what can I say? We need to feel our presences. Valeria Benfica. Here she is. I can see Maria Rodrigues also here with us. Thank you, Maria. Jailton. Jailton. Inbox. Chi, 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 chi. Okay? We cannot forget let's talk about the questions that I owe you some uh, clarifications right hello Katia how are you Leonor Pacheco how are you Leonor thank you for being with us thank you Danny hello Danny hello Erica Cousins of the Heart, thank you. Cessa, beautiful Cessa, love the pictures you post on Facebook. And Carol, too. <laughs> We're like, uh oh, wonderful. <laughs> and Rihanna, Rihanna is here from South Africa, and she's doing great effort 
to translate to the African's language with her group, her husband. And for those who want to donate, Nina, thank you for asking. Go to Kardec Radio's website, kardecradio.com. There's a banner. Even in our Facebook page, if you go to photos, there is a photo about the campaign for Spiritist Books. We have the P.O. box there for you to send the Spiritist Books. And I say books, but it can be one book. If each one of us sends one book, how many books? I don't know, but it will be many. And if you don't want to send a book, you can donate. Through the donation, we'll convert 100%. Okay? 100% to books that we'll get to our dear family, Spiritist family there, Rihanna, Nico, and other friends, because the access to books there is not easy. And it's very expensive. Okay? Thank you, Nina, for asking. Thank you, Nico, for being with us. Beautiful work, friends. Thank you. Okay? Brother Jacob certainly has been a breakthrough for us. You're right, Jailton. Right? Andrea Tô is sending love to you, Carol. Yeah. Tiago is here. Welcome, Tiago. I wish you could come here and play some guitar for our songs. Karina, how are you, beautiful Karina? Mackenzie Melo, oh. mamma mia. Mackenzie, are you real? Are you for real? You made it. Thank God. Beautiful works, Mackenzie Melo. Right? Amazing. Amazing. Work. The works that Mackenzie Melo and Francisca Kranz have done throughout these years at Kardec Radio, studying and reading the books by Andrea Lewis are amazing. They just finished Sex and Destiny. And what is next? Wait and see. <laughs> and you'll be happily surprised. Thank you, Mackenzie, for everything. Amanda Andrade, Seeking the Good. Thank you for the reminder, Amanda. Simone from the Love and Charity Center in Orlando. Aww. Beautiful mother, beautiful loving presence. By the way, the group Love and Charity is doing beautiful videos. And we're, stream we're broadcasting the audio uh, several times a week of the studies that they are doing about Kardec's work, so it's phenomenal. Thank you, Simone and David and many others. Thank you. Solange, how are you? Teresa Castro, how are you, Teresa? You're doing well? Carmen Lúcia, how are you? We are happy to have you here. You know, Rudy! Voltei for more, Karen Vanessa. <laughs> You're good, Rudy. Only you. Only you. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you, friends. Now, breathe in and out. Because it is joyful, but it's also serious. How can we be joyous and joyful and serious at the same time? Only Jesus can explain that. But it is possible. <laughs> Because Jesus was smiling, he was joyful, but serious. He was committed, coherent, but loving and kind. Perfect combination, the feminine and the masculine. And this reminder to us about the feminine and the masculine inside of all of us is a good um, guidance, it's good guidance for us to understand what Brother Jacob was going through at this very moment. Remember Brother Jacob, we stopped yesterday when he was visiting the Spiritist Center that he used to participate in Rio de Janeiro. He discarnated and he was given an opportunity together with the renowned Spiritist practitioners, Kai Bar Schutel and, and Guilherme Ribeiro. They were given the opportunity of coming of course, by God, and they gave Brother Jacob an opportunity to go back to the Spiritist Center. We talked about different features of it, and now we have them saying the following, okay? Thank you, Selena, for your loving presence and for your beautiful works. We count on you at Kardec Radio. 
Paula, beautiful Paula is here. It's good to have you here, Paula. Tiago, it will be a pleasure to have you sing, okay? I know it's very important. It's an eternal prayer. Music is an eternal prayer. How beautifully said. Thank you. Thank you. Comforting excursion. Brother Jacob begins by saying the following. How many times we evoke and invoke light in the circles of our religious faith? Unconcerned, we advise friends to look for that light. And on many occasions, we inadvertently prescribe it to others whom we consider to be in shadows or in the shadows. Through idle chatter, we point out those that do not possess it. And whenever we speak in public, we beg it to the world out loud. Thank you, Shane and Eric, for double checking on the app. What a beautiful teamwork. Thank you. In truth, and we're talking about cooperation, such cooperation is opportune and beneficial when based on sincerity and good intention. Nevertheless, we often forget the Lord's word who advised us to take advantage of the opportunities of the human experience to enlighten ourselves through the devotion to others. The problem overflew in my thoughts. My friends did not make suggestions. They did not complain. They supported me smiling and happy. However, the bright emanations that came with them were a silent warning. I had not provided light for myself. I had led many discarnate to the sublime source of evangelical light, but I forgot my own needs. I had taught many people or pretended to, and in all my verbal movement of Christian preaching had stressed the imperative of light for the human hearts. However, now, that I was part of a spiritual society, I recognized the opacity of my soul. My pair spirit remained with the same appearance it once was characterized in the physical experience. O oh Lord, why do we not make enough silence within ourselves to listen to our, your teachings while we linger in the atriums of the world? Pause for a second. This is so deep. Remember he's in the meeting and he realizes that his spiritual friends, the discarnates, who are with him, they already emanate their own light. He doesn't yet. Remember that the discarnates were even bullying him? Remember? And what is very important for us here is to remind ourselves that he said their, their bright emanations were a silent warning. Pause. We don't need to discarnate to feel that warning. How many people, how many times we may be around people, we may not see the light, but we feel their different vibrational field, their emanations, we, f we just feel. And we may feel good, but we also feel like Brother Jacob. It's not that he was bothered but it was like a natural warning. Whenever you see somebody who is more disciplined, more loving, more caring, more virtuous, it's a silent warning to us that we are yet to advance, to move forward. Question, 
This is a therapeutic conversation. Question number one. What do you do then, usually? Alternative A. Do you feel jealous? B. You're bothered by it? C. You're jealous and bothered by it? D. You feel motivated to keep working on yourself and know that you're also destined to be that virtuous? And E. None of the alternatives. <laughs> Enter Joseph is so funny. He is funny. He's always doing something. <laughs> but where are we? Mm? Mm. Where are we? Don't feel guilty, okay? If you feel jealous. Love yourself. Let's love ourselves. Avanis, I feel I feel jealous. But then what do you do with your jealousy? Because you're not destined to be jealous. You're not destined to be bothered by the good. You're destined to be the good too. And to do the good. Right? So alternative D. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tiago. Yes, Jayutin say I'm drawn to them and feel very motivated. Right? Andrea, alternative D, mm -hmm. D, everybody D, but if you're not, you know, what do you do with your jealousy? Take your hand, extract from your heart. How? Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I reincarnated to learn to do good. Reincarnation, the path of progress, always progress. Reincarnation, the opportunity. Reincarnation, the way to become good, to achieve true happiness. I always taught my students if you see anybody doing anything, remember, you can do it as long as you make effort and repeat it. If you see somebody who already is an expert in the field of anything, remember, they have worked hard and now they master it. If you work hard, you'll master it. In the book, Jesus in the Home, the Spirit Nee, Lucio, yeah, the grandfather of Celia Lucius. He writes to us about a parable told by Jesus in a, in a home meeting in Peter's house, saying that there was a man who was very famous f talking about music, right, Thiago? Because of his skills as a musician. And he had an assistant. Years went by. And one day he is laying down in his, house, in his house and he hears some music. And remember, no radio, no internet <laughs> at the time. So where is that music coming from? And he starts walking around his house. He realizes from a window that his very assistant, his servant, became a great expert in the field of music. How? By practicing every day. He would not only clean the instrument, but he would also practice what he has been learning. He was learning. Every day, every day, every day, many years later, he is an expert like his master. And like our master, if we practice what he is singing every day, we will be singing like he did and like he does. Right? Yes, Andrea and Katya. Okay? 
Yes, discipline is hard, but don't worry, Andrea. Discipline is something that comes since our beginnings as we were created. We were always under great discipline, spontaneous, I mean, guided by the good spirits. Now we are voluntarily working on it. So the more we pay attention, the better it is. Right? So Brother Jacob is saying, I forgot my own needs. He said that was his main mistake. I forgot my own needs. Why do we not make enough silence within ourselves to listen to your teachings while we are in the world? What are our needs that he's talking about? What is it? Like Andre is saying, I need to work my discipline. Right? So what is your need that you cannot forget? And we need to practice what? Not worry about preaching to others, but to educate ourselves. So the question for us right now as we kick start this new chapter, are we forgetting our needs? And our needs is nothing to do here with the material life. Mm -hmm. He's not talking about material life. He's not talking about material things and material ties. It's about the moral the moral, the spiritual, intellectual, moral part. Are we forgetting our spiritual needs? That's what he's saying. What are your spiritual needs? What is it? Spiritual needs? Did you know you have spiritual needs? You think, oh, I need to eat. I need to rest. I need you need something spiritual nourishment what is your spiritual nourishment the one that you need love affection tell yourself begin with you i love and approve of myself in ways that are pleasing to god i love and approve of myself in ways that are pleasing to God. Look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I love and approve of myself because I am a child of God. I love and approve of myself because I'm a child of God. I cannot, I cannot put myself down. I cannot punish myself because God has created me and sustained my life. Right, Adilson, big hug. Right, Felipe, big hug. So friends, it's very important to realize what are our spiritual needs. Do you have a clear answer? Homework, okay? We have the next 24 hours your guardian angels, spirit mentors will be with you to help you boost the awakening part on your spiritual needs. Because if we forget them, like Brother Jacob, we're going to regret. As he says, oh Lord, why do we not make enough silence within ourselves to listen to your teachings? So what do we need to forgive? What do we need to let go? What do we need to love more? What do we need to be more embracing? To be more just respecting people's rights? Right? Karina, that's the homework. And in this time, you write a book, okay? I know you're a bookworm, but this time, you are going to write a book, <laughs> right, Karina? 
right, right, Carol? Right. And talking about love. Right, Lisa, Telis, welcome. Don't cry, Argentina, Carol. <laughs> because in the, as he's talking about spiritual needs, who comes to console him? His daughter, Martha. Martha, right? Tiago is mentioning to us, so beautiful and true. You know, I often listen to some brothers and sisters saying, like, oh, I won't be able to reach that spiritual level in this life. Not at all. I will need thousands of lives in order to do so. And I must confess that really saddens me. I guess we sometimes confuse impossible with difficult and surrender to what we believe or instead of surrendering to what we really are, children of God. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for summarizing. This is very important. Actually, Thiago, I remember Divaldo Franco. Divaldo Franco sent to a friend of mine. This friend came in like, oh, but my life, it's impossible to achieve what I need. And Divaldo said precisely those words. It is possible. It may be difficult, but not impossible. Difficult, but not impossible. Because we need to create new muscles. New muscles, okay? So Martha, okay, she comes and sees. She finds Brother Jacob in tears. Can you believe it? He's crying. Brother Jacob, you are adorable. You, as a man, spirit has no sex, right? But remember, he just discarnated, so the last reincarnation is still putting some fuel in the masculine. In 1947-48, a spirit masculine figure telling us that he was crying, big deal, big deal. He was crying, finding myself in tears. The little daughter strived to comfort me. I explained I was embittered and defeated. Shattered, sheltered in a quiet field where all the blessings of friendship smiled upon me, I felt unworthy of such assistance and tenderness. I had not lit my own lamp ahead of the future. There nobody accused me. No one proclaimed my deficiencies, yet I was not foreign to my own situation. I did not speak to her with the capricious expression of youthful anger, but with the deep feeling of a man who finds himself disenchanted from one moment to another, deceived in the best intentions. I have to stop to say hi to our friend Wagner Moura. Wagner, good job. You know, beautiful works. Wagner Moura is here. He is the man. He is the man who really opened an opportunity, not only for him, but for those who are receiving and those who are giving. Thank you, Wagner. He is the leading force of the Fraternity Without Borders. So if you have any question, go talk to Wagner. Send him a message. Wagner Moura Gomes. He is doing beautiful works with a group of friends. Remember, when you buy the book Pills of Trust, as Carol already said, you're helping. Go to ssvirginia.org. When you buy the t-shirts, when you go to fraternitywithoutborders.org, you go there and sponsor a child. Donate. As far as I know, because I know the people, Wagner, Andre Moreira, Angelita, and others, Leia Severo, they are committed and they do not receive a penny. Okay? It goes straight to the people who need. You want to help the world? That's one way. After all, we're here. Heal the world. <laughs> Make it a better place. 
for you and for me and the entire human race there are ch in this case the children are dying right they are they don't have food they don't have shoes they don't have bed they don't have shelter they don't have parents okay friends thank you Wagner thank you Juliano today is the very day our spirit is society of Virginia celebrates 10 years of work I know 10 years just baby stepping but we're very happy that we achieved and the good spirits allowed us to participate in this effort 10 years bringing to people so thank you Juliano for being part of the family I know you and Leticia are not there but you were in our hearts thank you now Martha she said asked brother Jacob for serenity and meditation she asserted me that countless people discarnate in similar conditions and that in that group of workers no one thought himself greater many workers carried dense darkness within them and they never stopped working content and subservient in the conquest of the noblest expressions of their character it was not right for me to give in to discouragement don't be discouraged everybody is on the same boat even if I had lost my time I could not assume that tears were enough for the restorative work I committed to the work of the incessant renewal to the good okay no I'm not perfect no nobody is Jesus is and I say perfect meaning purified as Kardec said big deal oh, I'm not gonna do this because I'm not perfect no 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 don't go there the more work you do the better it is okay the more work and if you don't know what to do ask for your guardian angel to help pray 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 ask your guardian angel call the whatsapp number right there is a castro what is the whatsapp number h h e, e a, a r, r t. t heart that's the heart and you call and you say guardian angel guardian angel here i am here i am calling for your help calling for your love I am ready I am ready and we are ready right Adilson thank you thank you thank you thank you Adilson our yes group soon is also gonna turn 10 years and it's what a blessing we're just beginning but it's an achievement of the collective the good on the earth it's a victory of the good on the earth so noticing my sincere purpose of readjustment kind math Martha naturally interested in consoling me proposed a quick excursion brother Jacob is coming to the US <laughs> no literally he is yeah no yes <laughs> she had time to help me she knew of my inner desire to visit california ah no california of all places <laughs> not new york not virginia not alabama not new jersey why california following my heart's plea there's some bonds awaited my spirit remember because he wanted to see sunshine <laughs> <laughs> thank you
Thank you, Rafael. You're listening from Chicago. Bless you, Rafael. Bless our dear city of Chicago. The Spirit Society of Chicago is there. Strong. Daniela Oliveira, Fernanda Bonini, their husbands, friends, Greg Palma. Yeah, it's a joy. I cherish the project with almost shy like joy. Yeah, he's traveling to California, brother Jacob. Remember, before going to Brazil, from the Czech Republic, where he was born, he came to California. He actually met Thomas Edison and others. The restlessness and curiosity marked my childish steps. The restlessness and curiosity that marked my steps on the earthly journey were all intact inside of me. In addition, the trip would have wonderful purpose under the solar splendor. I suppressed the worries that tortured me and prepared myself. In short time, we found ourselves outside the blessed area of service and restoration. Can you believe it? They travel like that? No. S like security screening no <laughs> yeah no invisible airplane like wonder woman no she needs to take the invisible plane they don't even need it yeah it's amazing so in daylight the neighborhood seemed nothing but a long mass of opaque matter in the surroundings i could not even see the bridge i had recognized the night before and distancing ourselves from the happy neighborhood, I noticed that we were passing through other spiritual colonies full of vegetation and houses, although less rich in beauty. Answering to my questions, my daughter informed me that it was always possible for us to visit the lower plains and study them. But the same is not true of the higher spheres for which we must satisfy the necessary preparation. I think I would have stayed for a long time looking at the, long, the landscape under my eyes if Martha had not called my attention to our goals. Like some people we know. White Carol, we know. People like this, adorable. Ana Augusta, how are you? Breathe in, friends, because the happy trip, as he titled, is just beginning. Roni Lama, how are you? Talking about California. And Roni, brother Jacob is visiting California. Rita de Cassia, can you believe Rita? He didn't visit Atlanta <laughs> or Virginia or Washington. He was visiting California. But there is a reason. I think, he says, she said to him, in these planes, the mental connection with earth is still enormous. Many people who wasted time live there eager to revisit. They are nostalgic about the experience in the flesh that they cherish to live for the time being almost exclusively of the past. So there are people who discarnate and then always in the past. Thermometer, a uh, thermometer to see if we're gonna experience this. If you have Facebook, you know every day Facebook has like memories and there are people who daily repost memories of previous years. Of course it's natural. But you know, it's beautiful, okay, gone. And there are people who every year repost the memories of the previous year, and like that's how they live. When they discarnate, they're gonna be nostalgic too. In the gospel, according to Spiritism, can you pass the book please? Thank you, Carol, thank you, Carol. So here we have the gospel, chapter five. There is a message titled, uh, Melancholy. Mm -hmm. And in this chapter, in this passage, the, the spirit who is telling us about it, he says, oh, 
Item 25. Do you know why a vague sadness sometimes weighs upon your heart and makes you find life so bitter? It is your spirit which aspires to happiness and freedom, and which, bound to the body that serves as its prison, exhausts itself in vain efforts to escape. Believe me, and strongly resist these feelings that weaken your willpower. The yearnings for a better life are innate in the spirit of all humans, but do not seek them in this world. Okay? So, the spirit François de Genève, François de Genève, item 25, chapter 5, titled Melancholy. Martha is saying that there are people who are like this. They're so nostalgic that when they discarnate, they keep attached to those zones because they keep being melancholic about what has passed. Measure where you are in terms of nostalgia. Are you daily like, oh, I wish those were good times. Oh, those were wonderful times. Oh, nothing is so good as the old times. Be careful, because if we discarnate today, we'll be just like this. Do, they do not commit, they did not commit serious wrongdoings, but they do not apply themselves to the good as much as they should. When we're looking at the past, we're not working on the present. When we are too much in the future, we create anxiety and we don't work in the present. They complain of a thousand misfortunes but refuse any regenerative work. They are the omission folks, said Martha. People who are simply like, oh, everything's so difficult. My childhood was so great. My childhood was so wonderful. And they are not focused on doing the good today. Thank you, Rita. I believed us far from reaching our destination when my tender daughter pointed to the beautiful landscape of California. For sure. I thought I would first discover the beautiful views of Sierra Nevada, contrasting with the superb waters of the Pacific. However, we were already stepping on American ground. Friends, July 4th is Independence Day. It's also the anniversary of Kardec Radio. Mentor Joseph has been reminding us of this, the higher spirits, founding mothers and fathers who are greatly committed with the spiritual contract of America, the United States of America, with the world. We need to revive it. We need to remember the American identity that was given by Christ. And you and I, no matter where we are living in the United States or abroad, or anywhere in the world, you're invited to join us. You know why? Because the brain needs the whole body to function well. It needs your thoughts and feelings and we need to rescue that admiration and remind the new generations of the beautiful foundation of this country. You're invited to join this effort, okay? Thank you. Aline, how are you? The past and the future can be productive tools, but should not take us away from focusing on the now. Beautifully said. Thank you, Aline. And Tiago is reminding, a good book by Eckhart Tolle, The Power of the Now, of Now, exactly, that talks about that as well. Hello, Fabio. Thank you for joining us. Tiago, he lives in the heart in Brazil. You're right. And you know, heart, pump your love to the brain because we need oxygen. We're like, oh, can't breathe. So keep pumping, Brazil. <laughs> okay we have beautiful network we are all we belong to one another says Emmanuel 
how to describe the wonderful journey to the information to the hungry reader I have no presumption to do so we have at stake here forces and elements that the contemporary senses cannot appreciate it would actually be as difficult to explain my quick journey to the west of the United States as it would be impracticable any narrative by an ordinary man to his neighbors after having traveled in space with the speed more or less similar to that of the light or sound we are one Tiago thank you if an European must be careful when communicating with an Eskimo so as not to hurt his mental state and not to be taken for a liar then what to say of the measures which a discarnate spirit m must adopt in the face of a friend still imprisoned in a terrestrial body we got it brother Jacob <laughs> but you know one thing we know America is beautiful right oh beautiful for spacious skies right America America God shed thy light on thee la da 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 we're gonna <laughs> sing on July 4th yes America is beautiful the whole world is beautiful so what happened is he gonna meet Thomas Jefferson no Thomas Edison yes or no important visit how long are they gonna be talking that's a good question after quenching the thirst for affection with hearts particularly dear to my soul it came to me an invisible purpose you see he had spiritual acquaintances here in America mm-hmm so he was visiting them remembering my passage through the blessed lands of America when he was incarnated I remembered someone whose intelligence and kindness I had never given sufficient admiration my daughter looked at me as if guessing my thoughts but before she spoke I inquired suddenly Martha would it be possible to see Thomas Edison she smiled sympathetically and handed me her generous arm and then we headed north ah north of California after a few minutes we reached sublime scenery beyond we who were confronted with vast communities evidently linked to the Spanish heritage were now engaged in a vast circle of Anglo-Saxon education I started using English to be better understood really as a discarnate look at Kara's face he's discarnated and he needs to speak English to be better understood what about us oh my god no that's not an yeah I started to use English to be better understood yes bless his loving heart right Martha led me to the noble building where she explained our purpose to a gentleman of respectable figure but to my surprise I heard him announce that the great benefactor had already been warned of our visit and was preparing for the meeting <laughs> Mama mia, what a how much we're learning here, huh? Yes. And what about God? Now think about this. If Thomas Edison already knew that they were visiting and they just realized, imagine God. And we think, oh God, I don't wanna tell you everything because I'm ashamed, like I oh, and God is like <laughs> I know I already know but he doesn't say because God doesn't speak he is yeah he is 
she is, it is, whatever pronoun we want to give to God, or G is, that's a good pronoun, G. Not he, not she, not it, G. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, he lived, said the informant, at a very high sphere, but he will come immediately to meet us for 15 minutes. No, 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 no. He lives in a high sphere. He was announced and he was coming quickly for 15 minutes. And you're like, 15 minutes? What? What is it? That was all the time he could spare. Tish, my, as we say in Portuguese, used to long conversations in Brazil. I'm glad he didn't say, <laughs> I didn't say this. You know, it's Brother Jacob saying, used to long conversations in Brazil, by the way, <laughs> although I never despise the value of time, I tried to renounce the sex satisfaction we had asked for. However, the helpful brother explained that during the year 1947, the great inventor had set aside more time to see friends of another time. While we waited, I asked my daughter about the barriers of verbal communication. I'm not going to say anything, I promise, Mr. Joseph. Would we continue after this to be so isolated from one another by linguistic barriers? Could not those discarnate in Brazil penetrate the treasures of other civilizations because of the language, thus converted to a prison? Martha patiently explained that the spirit of national homes dominates in the circles closest to the incarnate mind. As we evolve, we will find greater demonstrations of collective understanding until we are absolutely liberated from inhibitions arising from difficulties of exchange. Martha emphasized that most spirits in the temporary gatherings in which we are stationed are obligated or obliged to return to the body in order to continue the learning. And that all liberation and all sublimation have their corresponding price in our efforts. If we are working in achievement A as much as we wish achievement B, we will not reach the advantages without preparation, service, and effort. Too much for little time. But stay there. Don't go away. Because we're almost done with this chapter. But we're coming to a hot topic. In the book Evolution into Worlds, Andre Luis reminds us that only higher spirits can read thoughts. Spirits who are at ordinary on the earth, at common, you know, average evolution, like ourselves, when they discarnate, they are limited to the language they understand and they recall in their last reincarnation. So, if we want to help the discarnates, we need to speak the language that they speak the most. If I do a spiritist meeting in a country, in a language that everybody understands, we're immensely helping and very easily the discarnates. Some people tell me, oh, but it's about vibrations. Not necessarily. We need the, intelli the intelligible, as Paul of Tarsus says, the intelligible verb, the word that is understood. We respect everyone, who, however language, they need to do it. But we remind ourselves, Brother Jacob is saying, I started speaking English to be better understood. So we need preparation, service, and effort. Preparation, service, and effort to do any achievement. Preparation, service, effort. Preparation, service, effort. 
What did Thomas Jefferson say to him? I want to know. Yeah, Kara wants to know too. <laughs> right? Hmm? What is it? Sunshine. Uh -uh. Raphael is reminding us, good reminder, discarnate spirits that can only listen to incarnated people. And if we don't speak their language, we're not helping. And they're the ones who need more help. And they are in greater number, as Carol is reminding us, right, Carol? Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, the word of a great benefactor. Last paragraph, stay strong because this is phenomenal. We were entertained in comforting lecture when I saw Thomas Edison himself. Such brightness crowned. He's always observing the light. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Such brightness crowned his venerated head that I had the urge to kneel. I went up to him disturbed with joy and wanted to kiss his hands. Now imagine when you see Jesus, huh? Tish. The unforgettable benefactor embraced me against his chest and avoiding my tributes Recall the last years of the last century referring to the phonograph whose popularization I had the pleasure to witness. Right? Yes. Okay. So, we'll be there with you. I recall the centenary of his birth and the admirable scientist declared that despite being discarnated, he continues to work without rest, facing the dangers that currently threaten the earth. Remember, this is 1947, and this is just past the Second World War and the aftermath of the war, okay? While immersed in the studies and achievements of physics in the spiritual realm, Thomas Edison is not impervious to the glorious service spiritism is doing for the benefit of the world. He noted that it's not enough, now big revelation, to prove individual survival after death, nor to make new properties of nature available to man's intellect, but rather to promote immediate resources for the dignifying of people to promote immediate resources to dignify life on the earth like electricity provided to all light the light bulb dignify life thomas edison represents the gateway to illumination. We leave literally leaving darkness behind while we're gaining our own light. Isn't that interesting that Brother Jacob is constantly worried about light and he is connected to Thomas Edison, the inventor, because our achievement is our self-illumination. So this book pushes us to a, another frontier of us. Your frontier, my frontier. What is it? To dignify life, fraternity without borders. A spirit is center. To promote immediate resources. People are obsessed. People are in need. They go to the center. They are given spiritual nourishment, spiritual tools to live a more dignified life. Because when you go to the Old Testament, you're going to see countless true stories of like Nabucodonosor, uh, I, I, forgive me for the pronunciation in English, and his story of obsession, and even David, through obsession, how much they were humiliated, socially speaking. And how much uh, this obsession meeting 
would give them resources immediately to stand up tall again and live a more dignified life. When you see homelessness, it's about helping them raise above, right? As Sunshine is saying, she just came back from the work, the obsession, the rescue work. Rescue work dignifies the life of the spirits. You're right. Thank you. Rita, the communication is not by the mind at our level yet. Andrea Lewis talks about that in a clear question and answer in the evolution into worlds. In this book, they talk about, in the book Among Brothers of Other Lands, they repeat again, time and again, that the spirits that are more attached, they don't understand any other language. And Chico Xavier also spoke about this. And Chico Xavier talked about it. And we published in three issues of the Spiritist magazine. And Chico was very conscientious when he was here. He was learning English to speak and be better understood here. And he was the, the one who really vouched for speaking the language of all right we're back here the, so that the educational processes of the world may observe the indispensable respect for the source of eternal creation these are the words by Thomas Edison he declared that the atomic disintegration practice in America is followed with undivided concern by the tutelary forces of the planet, stating that humanity is now experiencing a distressing period of transformation without the least prospect of lasting peace due to the bellicose feelings that guide the hearts. And this was just 1947, and we're still in that same boat. He asserted, at no other time was there so great an imposition of understanding and the enforcement of the teachings of Jesus. However, until the principles of Christianity govern creatures in general, hunger and thirst, war and sickness, injustice and fear, destruction and ruin will reign periodically. So he's saying, you want to help people? Share the good news. Shed the good news because they are not fake news. <laughs> the good news are good. And as Mentor Joseph was saying, the anniversary meeting of the Spiritist Society of Virginia, he's saying, if you don't believe in the good, you don't believe in God. Because the good is God's creation. If you don't believe in the good in you, you don't believe in your creator, God. And if you don't believe in the good, not choosing to feel the good, do the good, we're doing evil. There's no neutrality. So if we really love God, we must believe in the good. That's why Emmanuel said, we can only release the shackles of the past if we seek the good, feel the good, visualize the good, mold our lives to the good and does achieve it, okay? <clears throat> Is mentor Joseph Brazilian? <laughs> Rita de Cassia. I think, I think he is all nationalities. <laughs> when he allows us, Rita, we'll talk more about him. For now, he's a loving teacher who is dispensing the spiritual medicine so we can better understand this message, at least me, like understand these messages that are so profound, okay? Feeling that time was running out and our time is running out too, I asked if he could not, if he would not reincarnate again, to which he replied affirmatively, Thomas Edison is around? Wow! With a smile, however, he emphasized that he would wait for the opportune moment. 
I also asked for the continuity of his wonderful inventions with special mention to the electric light, to which he replied, smiling, The Creator is God, our Father. We're simple instruments of His wise and just designs. Inventions continue in the transposed sphere in the circles in which we, present, we presently breathe. However, my dear Jacob, is not now the occasion to invent a divine and eternal bulb that will work forever within us? With this delicate and constructive observation, the final embrace came, making us part our ways. Friends, thanks to Thomas Edison, we are here at 11 p.m. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see each other. <laughs> Literally, because the 11 hours of the day during the night is really dark already. So, thank you, Thomas Edison. And may you reincarnate well. And may you feel the support of our generation. Hopefully, in this new millennium, you will be able to give us much more. Now, the bulb, the bulb that connects. We need to bring God back. To our lives not the God that imposes but the real one when we can feel and cherish God's presence together shall we dear friends yes oh Jailton I will answer the question that Tiago asked Tiago where are you Tiago oh what about Esperanto is he really using the spirits world you know, good news for you, thanks to Le Severo and the Brazilian Spiritist Federation, Kardec Radio is going to stream at least once a week, July 4th, you know precisely the time. Esperanto lessons for those who want to learn it. Kardec Radio is in English, but there will be one day of the week in which for an hour we'll be sharing Spiritism in Esperanto. Shall we? Hmm? We'll talk more about it, okay? As we move forward in 21 days to a spiritual awakening. Are you feeling more awake? But if you're going to sleep, continue your awakening in the spiritual realm. Let's get together and continue the beautiful instructions and the works. If you're going to continue your day, Rihanna, Nico, and our beautiful Julie and others go work will be visiting you if God allows of course and supporting you and then when you sleep you come support us okay that's teamwork effort for now lots of blessings in the song the song the song Carol to wrap up to wrap up yeah somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. Big hug. Thank you, friends. Much love to each one of you.